time, given what you know and what you want. The secret to coping with any failure is to recognize that each decision you made was the very best one available under the circumstances. I did what I could, when I could, how I could. I did the best. And that's all I got to keep in mind. Learn how to respond assertively to criticism rather than collapse into the orgy of self-blame. Amen. Anger is often a byproduct of helplessness because your needs are unexpressed or expressed ineffectually. Hmm. Chapter 12 on asking for what you want will help you to express your needs more effectively. Learning to be assertive will reduce feelings of anger both towards others and yourself. The healthier strategy is to repeat affirmations of your intrinsic worth and remind yourself that any mistakes you made were the best decisions available for you at the time. Amen. Chapter 4 talks about accurate self-assessment. Self People with low esteem do not see themselves clearly. Like a reflection in a warped funhouse mirror, the image they see magnifies their weaknesses and minimizes their assets. To raise your self-esteem, it is absolutely necessary to throw away the warped mirror and learn to accurately perceive your particular balance of strengths and weaknesses. This chapter will help you create a clear and accurate self-description and learn to recognize and value the person you really are. It talks about a self-concept inventory, your physical appearance, how you relate to others, your personality, how people see you, performance at school or on the job, performance of daily tasks, mental functioning, hmm. how well you reason and solve problems, your capacity for learning, your wisdom you have acquired. Yeah, I underlined a lot under mental functioning. Okay, list your weaknesses. And it goes on to how listing your strengths. Exercise. Everything. Everything I'm reading includes exercise. The exercise has so many benefits besides helping me lose weight. And that's one of the hardest things for me to do is exercise, but... Exercise is key. It helps your body, your mind, and your soul. Then the book says you need to create a new self-description. For me, this is what mine is. I am a warm, friendly, open person who communicates well. I am reasonably assertive at work and with the children. I have difficulty asking for what I want and setting limits with my husband or boyfriend and certain friends. I make friends easily, although I'm reluctant to express anger with them. I have a good relationship with my children. At times, I nag and hassle them, but I am a good listener, and I am intuitive about people, especially when I can relate face-to-face. -face. Something about when I'm around people, I just pick up on, it's like I just take on their spirit or something. Sometimes I can't even look at people because I don't want to take on what they feel in. I don't know what that is. I'm an extremely responsible person. I have a quick, perceptive sense of humor that people really appreciate. I make a real effort to be cheerful. I enjoy it when the whole family is home. Um, it's hard on me to be alone after 8 or 9 at night. I really enjoy people, but sometimes I try too hard or tell too much when I'm really involved in a conversation. I'm a fast, I am fast, casual, and efficient when it comes to cooking, housework, and grooming. I tend to put off things like visiting my mother and house cleaning. Fortunately, I have a high tolerance for kids' clutter. I do a whirlwind cleanup campaign on Sundays. Hmm. I feel sexually alive and open to sexual experimentation, although I feel inhibited about undressing or walking around naked. I am intuitive and able to communicate fairly easily about sex. 
You should read it to yourself out loud slowly and carefully twice a day for four weeks, which is I don't do. But I try to keep it in mind. Uh, celebrate your strengths. Daily affirmations. Likeable, competent, independent. Acknowledging and remembering your strengths and describing your weaknesses accurately, specifically and non-pejoratively. Chapter 5, Cognitive Distortions. Okay, I am, uh, I'm getting tired. Okay, I thought I could do this in one video, but this is a long book. And it's time for me to go into the doctor, so I'm going to have to make a part two to this video. And on that note, uh, I'm out of here. I'm going to pick up again on Chapter 5, Cognitive Distortions. All right, smooches, y'all. Peace.